I had just got off the phone with a personal friend of mine who landed in Vietnam and he was telling me about the current visa situation. So everything that works right now, everything that doesn't, and I wanted to fill you guys in on what my personal friend told me on this call because I know that a lot of you want to live in Vietnam again but you're not aware of the current visa situation. If you know what it was like to live in Vietnam pre-pandemic, you know that the visa situation was just fantastic. You know, you just applied for a, whatever, three month single entry, three month multi-entry visa on the internet. And right when you arrive, then you get the approval letter, you know, you get the approval letter, you show that to the immigration officer when you arrive and you just paid another fee, you know? So a lot of people lived in Vietnam and just paid maybe like a hundred, hundred and ten dollars for a three month multi-entry visa, right? That includes the visa and the approval letter. So it was a really good deal. But with the pandemic, a lot of these things changed. And right now, this is just no longer an option. As I was talking to that friend of mine, a very personal friend that I've known for many years, and we actually met while I was living in Vietnam, you know, for a very long time myself, he was telling me about how the Vietnamese government really used this time to fix a core foundational problem, which was to get rid of all the foreigners that were living in the country that were not paying taxes, that were not contributing to the economy as much, you know, as other people who work there, who had a work permit, pay taxes. For people who have a business in Vietnam, you can't really compare that. And the government really solved the problem. And as he was talking to his immigration lawyer, you know, he was wondering why they aren't returning to the old days. His immigration lawyer told my friend, he told them, well, you know what, the golden days are over. You know, you're just not gonna get the same visa conditions that we had pre-pandemic because the government was waiting for a moment to really jump all foreigners and that's why they also, you know, eliminated the automated visa extension system that they had in place during the pandemic. They just wanted to get rid of all the people. And the reason why they wanted to get rid of all the people was because you know, they wanted to make sure that they only have people in the country who are paying taxes, right? It's so logical, it makes perfect sense, but a lot of people don't get it. You know, they think like, oh, I'm from the West and you know, I'm, you know, spending more than a Vietnamese person is spending. Yeah, that's right, but you also have to consider that Vietnam has a massively growing middle class. You know, there's more manufacturing in Vietnam. Sooner rather than later, Vietnam is not gonna be as poor as it was a couple of years ago or a decade ago or two decades ago. In our lifetimes, what we're going to witness is going to be a Vietnam that's going to have a very decent, very large middle class. And right now it has a growing middle class. And so just to use the argument that you're spending maybe whatever, 50 to 100 percent more than the average Vietnamese person, you know, it's just not a very good argument because the Vietnamese government expects a lot more from you than it expects from other people because you come from, from the West and they expect you to bring opportunity, to bring money, to start a business, to work for a company, pay taxes, right? To contribute more than, you know, what was acceptable just a couple of years ago. And if you can't meet this specific criteria, you're just out. They don't want you anymore. And so they really used that. And I think the government thought about it for some time, whether they want to keep those people in the country. And we're, we're talking about English teachers that, you know, taught English without proper visa. It is practically illegal. They weren't paying taxes, right? There is a good amount of teachers that have a visa and that are paying taxes that are legally employed by a Vietnamese institution, you know, by a real school and that are paying taxes. So those people are going to be fine because they have a working visa, a work permit anyway. But we're talking about people who lived in the country legally. That also includes, by the way, digital nomads. That includes digital nomads too, because, you know, they just got the tourist visa, they extended, and they did it all the time for whatever, you know, like three to four times, then they left the country, they came back in. They don't want those people anymore. And we really see this picture across all Southeast Asia. We're seeing it in Malaysia, we're seeing it in Thailand already for a very long time, not just recently. I mean, Thailand has adopted this approach, not just during the pandemic, no. They already had this approach in place for a much, much longer time, for many years, because they knew, hey, no, we don't want to have a lot of people live in our country that don't pay us enough. You know, they don't want to have people in the country that are just floating around, that are living on a tourist visa, that are spending like five to ten dollars a day on food, and that's all that they're adding. That's just not good enough anymore. Because again, supply and demand. What's really interesting, what the governments want is entrepreneurs. They want to have business people. 
And there's a growing number of business people. Why? Because there's more ways to make money online. There's more ways for people to start a company in Southeast Asia, use the cheap labor that's available and kind of build a business that way. And if they capture those people, those people, they're gonna generate more volume. Like one person that's in business, you know, is gonna pay more taxes, is gonna spend more on the economy, is gonna hire more people, is gonna create more like workforce than probably 20 to 50 people that don't do that. A lot of you guys probably don't want to start a business. You don't want to get your hands dirty in a sense that, you know, you just want to do this to get the visa. Southeast Asia's golden times are over. They're gone. Are they coming back? Well, they're still intact in some places. If you want to go to the Philippines or if you want to go to places maybe like Indonesia, maybe you're going to have luck there. Even Cambodia was kind of rotating back and forth. Hmm, we don't want to keep this visa, you know, the 12 month business visa. Hmm, we want to try something else. We want to see how many people apply. If we get rid of this visa, we're going to see how many people are going to apply for the real business visa. We're going to start a company, you know, we're going to create all the setup that we want to see before we can issue them a long term visa. So they tried that and now they switched again. So Cambodia has been kind of testing, you know, they, they've been trying things but they're still uncertain what direction they want to go. Do they want to go the direction of Thailand or do they want to go the direction of the Philippines? So Cambodia is still kind of, you know, trying to figure it out. Do they want to go the same direction that Thailand and Malaysia is going or are they rather looking to, you know, stick on the side of the Philippines, you know, just issuing nonstop tourist visa extensions without any value added pretty much. You know, all you need to do is go to the immigration office and pay. You got to do that every 60 days, which is not a pleasant process, but it's the path of least resistance financially. So what you can do is you can start a business in Vietnam, you know, get a company going, whatever it is, you know, start an outsourcing firm, you know, start a marketing agency you know, some kind of investing company, some kind of consultancy, like be creative, you know, just start an innovative business and Vietnam is going to open its arms to you. You know, you're going to be welcome with open arms if you do that. That's the way forward. Do you have less desirable skills, but still desirable skills like being a language teacher, knowing how to teach a language? Are you able to do that? Well, you may qualify for a work permit in one way or another. Just apply at a local school or maybe you find a foreign school, see if anybody wants to sponsor you. And one of the best ways to probably do that is to start online. Look at Facebook groups, you know, send your certificates in, you know, you have a degree, send that in. So what they want right now is qualified teachers. They don't want to have teachers with no degrees. You want to live there in the long term, but you don't want to start a business. You don't want to teach a language. You don't want to work for a company. Get married to a Vietnamese woman, you know, if you're single and if that's what you want to do. I'm just saying, I'm just throwing options at you, right? Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'm uploading new videos on digital nomad locations, travel updates, visas, crypto advice, and business advice several times a week right now. I highly recommend that you grab a free copy of my ebook, Nomad Elite, The Insider's Guide to Retaining a Life of Freedom. All you need to do is click on the link below the video. And if you got some more time left, check out these videos. Thank you for watching.